In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We confess, holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the, Holy, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, in mercy you sent your one and only Son to take upon himself our human nature. By his gracious coming, deliver us from the corruption of our sin and transform us into the likeness of his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the first Sunday after Christmas is recorded in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the, for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four corners of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. At the works of your hands, O Lord, I lift up my voice in song, singing for joy. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. The heavens praise your wonders, O Lord. Your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones. At the works of your hands, O Lord, I will lift up my voice in song. I sing for joy. O Lord God Almighty, is like you 
You are mighty, O Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, O Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They exalt in your righteousness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. At the works of your hands, O Lord, I lift up my voice in song, I sing for joy. A lesson from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 4. What I am saying is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no longer different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, he is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has also made you an heir. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up at that, to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. 
when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord. They returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Christmas gives us great joy and comfort that God has kept his word. That he has sent his Son into the world to save sinners. Those who were waiting for him such as Simeon and Anna, are full of praise and thanks to God, and so are you. Who You who have been witness to the, these same events through the word of the evangelists. Oh, rejoice, ye Christians. Rejoice, give thanks, sing, for the Savior, Jesus of the Savior of the world has appeared. God has kept his word. But now what? What does this joyous news mean for, for you and for me? What did this joyous news mean for Simeon? For Anna? For Simeon, it meant that he could finally depart in peace. That is, it meant that he could 
die. Congratulations. The Savior has come. Now you can die. What did it mean for Anna? For Christians? There's at least a possibility that, that Anna's word, her spreading the, the news about what she had seen and, and heard, it was Anna's talking that alerted Herod to the fact that the Magi had slipped through his fingers. And that set in motion a world of wrath from Herod, the murder of babies in Bethlehem. What does this joyous news mean for Mary and Joseph? The word of the angel Gabriel had come true. Mary conceived a child. Joseph took her and and took care of her and the child. But sometime after Jesus is 12, Joseph fades out of the picture, out of the story, so that we can only surmise that Mary becomes a widow. And the soul-stabbing wounds she receives when, when she stands at the foot of the cross is made even more painful by having to do this again, watching someone die that she loves, to do it again alone. What does Christmas mean for Mary? Congratulations, you're a mother, and you get to therefore bear the cross of all mothers the pain and the heartache and the trial, the work that comes along with it. She gets the vocation of a mother to one who will be executed. What does this joyous news mean for the church? God's salvation, which he has prepared in the sight of all people, out in the open with public promises, prophets and promises, sworn on oath, not just for the Jews, but a light for revelation to the Gentiles. The angel specifically said, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. And so the church of Jesus has has good news for everyone. Congratulations, Christian church. You have a calling too. To proclaim the wonders that God has done, to proclaim it to all in the world for whom he has come. But just so you know, Simeon's words still apply. He said this child is destined to cause the rising and falling of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. In other words, the gospel is for everyone, but not everyone will believe it. Many won't. He is a sign that will be spoken against. They'll speak against him. They'll murder him. They'll kill him. They will reject him. They will leave him. They will ignore him. And they is Israel. It's his own people, the people to whom he was sent. People will show what they really think and believe by how they treat Jesus. And what does this joyous news mean? mean for you. You who have prepared your hearts and your minds in repentance during Advent, you who have pondered with Mary, who have worshipped with the shepherds, who have beheld him, even held him in your arms like Simeon. Congratulations. Do you not also have a calling? And in that calling, in that vocation, will you not also suffer? Will you not also die? Will you not also be pierced through? Will not the Christ child reveal the thoughts of your heart too? Will you not also rise or fall by Jesus? For either you believe him and love and trust in him above all things, or you do not. Are you not in danger of being one who speaks against him too? If it's true for Israel, then then also for you. And when those who fall, who, who trip over him, who hate him, if they do that to him, 
How will it feel when they do the same to you who follow him? When they treat you as they did to him, only though, only if you stay close by Jesus' cross as Mary did, will you suffer with him. God has given no such promise as he did to Simeon about postponing your death until a certain time, until you see something. And yet for you, what does this joyous Christian Christmas message mean for you? It means that even, even if God fulfills your every prayer, answers every single prayer, if every single petition of the Lord's Prayer that you pray today comes to fulfillment, his kingdom comes, his will is done, give us today, your daily bread is provided every day, your sins and trespasses forgiven, delivered from evil, even if all of that is given to you. Congratulations. You too, like Simeon, get to die. What do we say in the catechism? Deliver us from evil. What does this mean? It means that we would graciously pray that when our last hour comes, he would grant us a blessed and a peaceful departure and take us from this world of sorrow to himself in heaven. All of this, another way of saying all of this, is simply that with faith in Christ, holding on to this Christ child in your arms, being part of his family means bearing a cross. That's what Jesus meant when he said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me. It's not fun to be so associated with the Savior that those who hate him hate us. It's not easy to be at risk of, of being against him too, not easy to see Jesus rejected and, and to be guilty by association with him. And it's no fun to die. But Simeon was righteous and devout. And Mary was blessed. And Jesus also reveals faith in the hearts of his faithful and kindles love in their hearts for him and for their neighbors. Know this, dear children, dear Christians, that this Jesus cares for you like he does his own family. Do you remember the tender scene at the foot of the cross when Jesus sees to the care of his mother who would be left all alone who that sword would pierce? She bears the cross of suffering at his death too and he cares for her. He sees to it that, that he gives to her, probably the youngest of his disciples, the one that would live the longest. He places her into his care. He thought of everything. So Simeon could die, could depart in peace. Death would come, but death was not, would not be the same for him. Just as God promised a Savior and kept that promise, so he has made a promise to you about your own end. As Luther writes in his hymn on the Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon, it says, This the Lord has promised me that death is but a slumber. And now I know he is my life, my friend, when I am dying. If it is true that Jesus is, as Simeon prophesies, a sign to be spoken against, set as the cause of the rising and falling of many in Israel, some people don't want to have anything to do with Jesus or his church where he gives his gifts, that would seem like a painful cross for his believers to bear. But it is, in fact, something that demonstrates, all it does is it shows that his word is fulfilled. Again, Martin Luther, in a sermon on this text, on, on the Song of Simeon, 
He lamented how frustrating it was that it seemed like no one listened to the word that he preached. He said, if I had only known how people would receive the preaching, how they would simply ignore most of it, and how some would flat out reject it, he said that pain would have led him to never preach a single word. If it were not for this verse, he said. If it were not for the sake, the fact that God had promised it. That God had told them ahead of time that Jesus would be set for the falling and the rising of many. This Christmas, come into the temple with Simeon. Hold your Jesus in your arms and bless God with all the joy and celebration you can muster. Knowing full well that what this means is that there is a cross ahead of you. And embrace the dear cross that he sets before you. For no one can take Jesus from you. He's not giving it back. Jesus, when he leaves this earth, when he ascends into heaven, he does not take back his human flesh or give it back. He does not ascend into heaven without taking the human flesh that he shares with you, taking it with him. He's not leaving his grave without taking your risen flesh, his own body, with him. And he does not go and carry the cross and the burden of your sin without taking your sin from you and giving you in exchange a light one, an easy burden. Come, come into his temple today and see the Christ, for he's here. As his spirit has led you, take him, take him in your hands, receive him in your mouth. See with Simeon, behold, your salvation. For you hold into your hands, in your mouth, the very same flesh and blood, the very same Christ child as Simeon held in his arms. You have seen and received your salvation. Here in your midst, the word of the Lord is fulfilled. Your sin is forgiven. You are at peace. So go. Depart. Go home. Fulfill whatever calling he has given to you. Bear the cross that he gives you with patience, confidence, and hope. And know this. He will also not let you die until you have seen him. Not because he's given you some promise that you won't see something until before you, you die like Simeon, but because he's already given it. Because he's already given to you his son. He's already given you, brought him to this place, given him to you in flesh and blood for your salvation, for your forgiveness, for your peace. So that you may finally depart in peace. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and
Almighty God, you promised long ago that a branch would come from the stump of Jesse, a child who would lead enemies to peace with each other and the penitent to salvation. When the time had fully come, you fulfilled that promise by sending your son to take upon himself human flesh. With his presentation at the temple, he fulfilled the law and brought peace to Simeon and Anna. He grew in wisdom before his parents and temple elders and finally brought to completion our redemption at the cross so that we may be transformed to his glory. May the eternal peace of heaven fill our hearts so that we see a glimpse of the serenity you have promised. May we put down our grudges and hatred so that the wolf may live with the lamb and the lion lay down with the calf. We pray today especially for the end of violence in our homes, on our streets and around the world. May your love conquer all. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. O oh, Savior, child of Mary, who felt our human woes, O oh, Savior, King of glory, who conquered all our foes, bring us at last, we pray, to the bright courts of heaven and to the endless day. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for in the wonder and mystery of his birth you have opened our eyes to the glory of your grace and renewed in our hearts the fervor of your love. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Almighty God, endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. Out of love you created us and everything which exists. In mercy you preserved the church in Noah's day with a flood. In grace you promised to bless us through Abraham's seed. With patience you protected that seed through the judges and kings of Israel. In faithfulness you repeated your promises through the prophets. And when the time had fully come, you sent your son, born of a woman, born under law to redeem those under law with a perfect and sufficient sacrifice which paid the price for the sins of the entire world. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, gracious Lord, we bow before you in thankfulness for your many and varied gifts, for Christ's redemptive death, his victorious resurrection, his ascension promises, and his powerful reign at your right hand bolstered by your endless grace and Pentecost spirit. We eagerly anticipate his glorious return. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promise, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.